Good morning. How are you this morning? Uh, I feel good. I don't know if I look good, but I do feel good. We got a beautiful day to talk about prostate cancer. Uh, I'm George Johnson. I'm your facilitator and discussion leader for today. And uh, let me kind of run through the little preamble. I uh, want to welcome you to these wonderful facilities we have here. And uh, we're dependent upon you to keep it clean. We have additional facilities outside the back door, down the hallway, in case you men have to uh, uh, do what you do frequently. Uh, your host, these are the guys that make things run. Uh, Lyle's not with us today, but Mike's here. And then we have uh, Gene. There you go, Gene. Uh, you got me and Bill Manning in the back there with the black box with the red light on it. He's our videographer. He's the guy that makes the DVDs that can, you can buy special only $10 uh, after uh, a month after the meeting. Uh, we got John Tassie. Where's John? Okay, there's John at the door. And, uh, and Bill Bailey, there he is. He's our, he's our librarian. And then Jim is not well today. That's why we don't have a sign. And, uh, uh, and the handouts, we're going to be asking you about that. In case you want to volunteer, uh, let us know. OK, the newcomer package. Every newcomer, get a package. Please raise your hand if you didn't get one. There we go. Anybody else? OK, uh, that package has information in it, some uh, background information, uh, useful products in there. And uh, the front page has a yellow sheet. We'd like you to fill it out. And uh, bring it up here to the table after, uh, after the meeting. And Jean will give you a call, uh, see if you've got any questions, anything we can do to help you out on that. Okay, what's the purpose of this support group? It's to help you become your own case manager. You have to manage your own case. Your doctor may not do that thoroughly. You're the one that has to keep a copy of all the lab reports. We recommend you put it in a three-ring binder. Those are your reports. You can ask for them and uh, study them and uh, keep a tab of questions, questions you may get. Uh, you want to ask your doctor what you learned here. And, uh, but we're not a substitute for your medical professional. Anything you say here, partic anything you hear here today, particularly what I say, I don't want you to ignore it, but it may be the basis of some questions you might want to ask your doctor. We don't recommend anything, uh, but we may stimulate you to think about some questions. You may want to ask your doctor about some options or alternatives. Okay, what do we provide here? We have a wonderful website. Uh, it's got a lot of information. Uh, refer to it frequently because there's some good videos and up-to-date things. We got a wonderful uh, display here of books, uh, DVDs, uh, papers. Uh, outside, there's some free stuff here. You can buy or you can rent. Uh, we have a newsletter, and our newsletter contributors, would you raise your hand here? There it is, and uh, Bill. Okay, <laughs> he summarizes. He's studying right now. He summarizes uh, the meeting speaker. I'll be particularly interested in what he does to me uh, today, um, and uh, the outreach program. We're seeking new members. We're seeking your friends. Uh, you're at an age where your buddies uh, need to get a PSA. So remind your buddies to get a PSA so uh, they can, early detection is so important. That's one of our major themes. Get a PSA, ignore the task force, get the PSA. Uh, monthly meetings, next month, Bernadette Greenwood. 
Do you remember Bernadette? Superwoman, a super presentation on the diagnostics, uh, new advances in that. And then what's going on with uh, laser therapy? That's fantastic stuff. She's going to give her a report on the clinical trials. So don't miss that. I left out the date, but it's the third uh, uh, Saturday in July. Okay, let's get a little rundown for our new members and uh, for, uh, for me, uh, a review of who do we have here, what's your background. So uh, how many are here for the first time? Please raise your hand. Welcome. I want you to know you're welcome. I uh, hope you benefit. You may learn something here and keep coming back. How many have been recently diagnosed in the last uh, six months? Okay. Well, I hope you learned something here that will be helpful. Uh, how many have had prostate cancer up to one year? Okay, let's see here. Now we're going to be counting up up to four years. Raise your hand. There we go. And now five to ten years. Look at that. So you guys with one or two years, look at what happens, how long you can hang in here. Uh, Eleven to fifteen years. See that? We still uh, got a large number. Uh, anybody above fifteen years? How many, sir? Yeah, anybody else? 27, and that's Jack. He's our, our grand award winner. Who else? I saw a hand over there. Okay, I got, I got 19 years. You, sir? 17. So if you, uh, if you follow the program, you're going to do well. Okay, let's do a review of the uh, treatment. Uh, how many are now on active surveillance for without any treatment? How many are on active surveillance? Okay, that's a growing number. More urologists are now suggesting that rather than starting off with surgery. How many have had prostate surgery of all kinds? That was the gold standard. Look how many that is. Okay. How about radiation of all kinds? More. See, that's now become more of the gold standard. How many are on ADT hormone therapy? We got quite a few for a good reason. Uh, we'll be focusing on that. How many are on chemotherapy? One, two, okay. And, and it's working for you, or you're on a new uh, chemotherapy program coming up? Right, we'll be uh, interested in, uh, in your progress on that. Uh, John, is uh, how many years since chemotherapy, John? My last infusion was in seven. Okay, so it's, it works. Uh, new treatments, uh, Taxiter, Provenge, uh, Cryo. We don't have too many. These guys here have done everything. See, so if, if you're interested in something new, uh, and also Jack has got a whole roster of uh, experience. Uh, so if you need, if you heard of something new, ask them. They've probably already tried it. Uh, recurrence. How many have recurrence? Look at that. See what happens when you have recurrence. You they're going to put you on ADT. So you folks that are, have effective programs in surgery or radiation. Uh, keep in mind that it may come back. Uh, we have some comments on that, and, uh, and also you, you, they're going to recommend ADT. So this is a precursor for you. Uh, how many are undecided what to do next? I am undecided. I hope I benefit from uh, something today. Okay, for us to be able to support you, we need you to support us with money, 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 money. Uh, we got small baskets, so we're looking for big bills. Uh, let's get those baskets passed there. Uh, pass them down the aisle. Don't let them stop. Just keep them moving down the aisle. Uh, we love bills with zeros on them, at least one zero. Uh, and your, your donation is tax exempt, and we're not a medical religious uh, uh, organization. So uh, keep those baskets going. Are they getting down here, the folks down here? I don't see any. Okay, uh, Chuck, would you? Yeah, I'm hustling for money. You know, there's a reason, because this is not an easy 
inexpensive operation we have to run here. So that's why uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a booster for uh, stewardship of our members. Okay, here's our, here's our six steps to, uh, to case management, early detection, I already mentioned that, the PSA test. Do high definition diagnostics so you can really see the, where the tumor is. And once you find out, you'd have a targeted biopsy so they put those needles right into the center of those uh, tumors. Uh, get your Gleason score, because your Gleason score is a key for determining what treatment you have. And before you talk about treatment, consider active surveillance. If you've got a low Gleason, six or lower. And, uh, and then uh, the next thing is treatment selection. And that's what today's subject is on treatment. Okay, today's agenda is on hormone therapy or ADT, androgen deprivation therapy. Doesn't that sound impressive? I'm on androgen deprivation therapy. Uh, we're going to have a discussion, sort of a new format we're going to try out, and uh, we're going to talk about the effectiveness, the results, and side effects. Uh, here's a discussion format. Uh, generally, we have a speaker, and then you ask questions, or we have uh, three or four members get up and talk, tell their story and lessons they've learned. We're going to try this out for a discussion, uh, not specifically a speaker, but as much as a discussion leader. And the subject will be a defined subject like ADT is today. We're going to have an agenda, a structure, timing, and uh, participants, which is to our members. And the focus is on case management, not storytelling, but uh, lessons we've learned or things that can be applied. Uh, and it's open forum. We want to get you to participate in this. We're, we may reach some draft conclusions, but we're not going to do any recommendations. Don't go out of here saying, well, they recommend this or that. That's not true. Uh, and then you see in red our little cautionary uh, note. And then, but you may develop questions. You may want to ask your medical counsel or doctor. OK, uh, I'm your discussion leader today. Here's my background. Uh, I, I've had uh, my first PSA was a 9. Uh, I didn't even know the doctor was checking the PSA. That was in 1998. Uh, he crudely wrote on the test results and mailed it to me, saying, I think you have cancer. Go see an oncologist, or, or, or excuse me, a urologist. And I tried to call him about that, and he never returned my call. So I went to a urologist, and he recommended, guess what? Surgery. Surgery. I went to four other doctors and ended up picking radiation, what was then called EBRT. In 1999, I got that treatment. Excellent results. Super. Not much in the way of side effects. Uh, lasted for, for 10 years. Can't beat that. I, I'm reading about this later. That's, not, uh, that's a, a pretty good uh, record, 10 years on, uh, on radiation. And uh, then uh, I skipped having a PSA. And bingo, it went to 14. Two years before, it was 0.7. Wow. Uh, I have a high doubling rate. My PSA will double in three months. Uh, if it doubles in two years, there's concern. Some people there doesn't double for five or ten years. Mine is three months. So if I let it go, it really jumps up. So I have to be very disciplined about getting my PSA and remind my doctor that I need to get one. Okay, what's my experience and uh, knowledge in ADET? I've had Trellstar, which is a version of Lupron, Avidar, Casadec, and I'm now on Firmagon. If I lift my shirt, you see a big red thing here. That's the injection site. Um, I've had adverse side effects. I had AFib as a result of Lupron equivalent. Uh, I had a stroke. I fell and broke my leg and with, with a loss of uh, bone strength. So uh, I'm a good example, a good example Remember that cereal commercial where they said, let's see if Mikey likes it. Remember that? And if Mike, they watch Mikey to see if he likes it. And then, okay, then they'll try it out. Well, I'm kind of a Mikey on ADT because they got a high uh, uh, doubling time, very, re uh, very reactive, and so also I get every side effect immediately. I have a Swedish background. 
I, I understand Italians and Irish don't have any side effects, but I do. So I get them all. So I'm a good Mikey. If you want to know about a side effect, I've got it. I get constipation and diarrhea the same day. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, I've had uh, effective ADT. Been on it eight years. Uh, I've had uh, intermittent also. It's had limited success. And the results, it's been effective for eight years. Now, what I am doing is different than what most urologists down here want me to do. And that's, we'll be covering some of that later on. Okay, here's today's agenda. We got to run, get a, what is ADT? What's hormone therapy? We'll go through that. Uh, types of ADT and the purposes. What is the cause of cancer? Supposedly it's a uh, hormone, so uh, that's why we're trying to knock down the hormones. Uh, what, what are, what's the uh, perspective of a urologist? Uh, and then we're gonna talk about some results, side effects, and then some controversies. ADT is full of controversies or conflicting opinions, and you can have your own too. And then I wanna get your member's experience, open up the forum, and then maybe some personal conclusions on your part and I may have some questions you want to ask your doctor. Okay? Let's do it. Okay, the definition of ADT and also called hormone therapy. We had a doctor come in here a couple of years ago, and he hates the word hormone therapy because it implies you're injecting hormones, treating with hormones. And so he insists on calling ADT. But it's loosely called, uh, uh, combined to mention both. Okay. It's androgen suppression or deprivation. The goal is to reduce levels of male hormones called androgens in the body to stop them from affecting prostate cancer cells. I've just underlined here, androgen stimulates prostate cancer cells to grow. Aha, uh -huh. what does that mean? The main androgens in the body are testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. How many of you have heard of dihydrotestosterone? Good, you must have come out to other meetings here. Uh, now, what I'm doing here is uh, just copying right out of the American Cancer Society or the National Cancer Institute. So if you see anything in black, uh, that's right out. Uh, you might think I'm plagiarizing. No, I'm just copying it. And this is their words and their terminology. If you see something in italics and blue, that's George Johnson's biased personal opinion based on my experience. So when you see that, that's me. And you can choose to ignore it. Uh, the reason I choose the American Cancer Society is they're very free to, to mention the controversies. If you go to NCI, they don't stir that stuff up. Well, you'll see here frequently mentioned that some doctors agree and some doctors don't. And that puts a quandary on you and me. Which ones are we going to uh, believe in? Okay, let's go on further. Types of ADT and purposes. Okay, here's the first type to lower androgen, lower your testosterone. Uh, you can do surgical. You see underline it's permanent. Uh, anybody have a surgical castration? You, sir. How'd it go for you? All right, one. All right, and that's what you had uh, cancer uh, of the testicle? Yes. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, doctors frequently recommend I have the surgery. Pretty archaic. So the preference is the LHRH, luteinizing hormone releasing hormone. Okay, it's a chemical castration. That's what they loosely call. And all, although they cost more than, than a surgical cancer, uh, castration, it requires, I've underlined this, more frequent doctor visits. And also most men choose that. Okay, let's run down the list of them. How many are on, first let's see, how many are on ADT right now? Okay, we got a, how many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, keep your hand to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It looks like about 25. All right, how many are on Lupron? Okay, uh, it looks like it might be 20. How many are not on Lupron? 
All right, then we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, how many are on uh, Eligard? Is anybody on Eligard? All right, uh, none. How many on Zolodex? Okay, how many on Trellstar? That's what I was on. I don't know why I got it, but I got one, two, three, four, five, five, I counted five, six, six. Okay, how many on Vantus? Don't know anything about Vantus. So what we got is we got a dominant Lupron and, and a few uh, trail stars. Okay. Uh, now there's another thing is that's somewhat similar to injection called Firmagon. How many are on Firmagon? Anybody? I'm, I'm the only one? Okay. Oh, you yes. Okay, you went off from Ragon, why? They told you to? Okay, that's what frequently Firmagon is. It, it, it's a, it's, they start you off on Firmagon because it doesn't create the classic Lupron flare. And then they switch you over to Lupron. Uh, here's a comment from me in blue. And they don't tell you this about Lupron, but Firmagon reduces heart side effects by 50% over Lupron. Do you know that? Lupron doesn't mention it has any heart effects. Uh, Firmagon does, and that's what I got. I got a heart effect. I got a stroke, and that's why I'm on Firmagon. Ever since that, every, all the doctors, particularly down here in San Diego, want me to take Lupron. I have to beat them off with a stick. Uh, so I've been successful in doing that. Okay, we got a next group. Question. To ask now, is Lupron the only one that is associated with cardiovascular with heart problems? To my knowledge, let, let me. The interesting thing about side effects. Let me back up here. When you buy a pill, CVS has this wadded paper, and, and you read it, and it lists all these things. When you get a Lupron shot, there's no wad of paper. The doctor has it in his, uh, his kit. You ought to ask him, can I have the, the, that piece of paper? Uh, you look up on the website, you look on the Lupron website, it doesn't man mention heart. It will talk about a symptom called chest pain. Huh? Is that due to heartburn? It's heart. So what I did, uh, to find out, really, uh, I went to the clinical study of Lupron, and there you find out, they list all the side effects, 8% of the side effects are coronary. 8% of the people on the trial for Lupron had a coronary problem, including AFib is what I got. Yes? The speculation on Firmagon as to why it has lower cardiovascular uh, Side effects is that it significantly lowers FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, right. much more than Lupron and the yes. other. Yeah, and, and it, it's unique in that regard. See, I, I had a trail star, not Lupron, and I had the heart, heart problem. Okay, these things are, t okay, now we have another group that's entirely different. I like Gene's uh, 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 analogy here. This is like duct tape on the cells. Your cancer cells have very aggressive receptors. It's seeking uh, to s stimulants. What the Casadex, and I'm going to use that term, Casadex does is put, seals that off so the receptors don't function. So it's like put, putting a stopper uh, in the drain. It prevents it from occurring. So it's a, uh, in some cases viewed as a double bind. You take Lupron, which reduces the hormones, and uh, Casadex, which then puts a seal on the receptors. So it's a double acting kind of thing. And uh, they're taken as pills daily. Antiandrogens are not often used by themselves in the United States. Yes. All right. I, I want to come back to you on it. Let me let me uh, finish. I'll, I'll be. He's been on something new and different. We want to hear about it. But we're doing Primer 101. Okay. And uh, so. Uh, what is interesting, they don't mention it is common and more prevalent in Europe, Casadex, than Lupron. 
It's an entirely different thing. It's been tested and so forth. It's highly regarded, but in the United States, it's not. Cassidex has never been tested by itself, monotherapy. They're running some tests now. I can't find the results. But Cassidex has always been used with Lupron. And so the results, uh, so you see that down here. It can be combined with uh, Lupron. When we see LH, uh, RH, we're talking for this group, Lupron and Trollstar. As a first line hormone therapy, this is called combined androgen blockage, CAB. There is still some debate as to whether CAB is more effective in this setting. Some people don't agree, so that's why they put that clause in there. Okay, then we have a more advanced ADT, and we call them loosely in this group uh, uh, Super Lupron and Super Cast uh, Castadex, and uh, Zytega is, uh, is the Super Lupron equivalent. And, uh, and Extandi is a Super Castadex. Uh, I put in the prices here in case you're thinking of getting some on your own. Uh, the qualifications are you have had to have failed uh, these other treatments and you have to had to metastasize before you get the insurance to cover these. Uh, Gene, you're on both Extandi and Zytiga. No, I'm not on Zytiga. I'm on uh, Extandi and Lupron. More, more typical these days, once you begin to fail one of the early treatments, Casadex or Lupron, and uh, you begin to fail them is they add one rather than taking away what you're doing, they add the newest one to it, which is what I've done successful. Okay, how many are on Zytega here today? One? One. All right, how about Extandi? One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, how's it doing for you? Is it working? By itself, uh, it's, it's, it's becoming less effective than yeah. when I first started taking it. And I've been on it for about two years. We had a gentleman here last year whose uh, PSA was 2,200. And he was put on Extandi, and in six months, his PSA was two. He's no longer with us. It worked for two years and very effective, but then it, it tends to have a, a certain life cycle to it. Uh, okay, we're not going to be talking about these uh, unless you want to later on. Okay, let's go back to the side effects of, uh, of Lupron and Trollstar. Hot flashes. Now, you, you, these may go away. Yes? I just wanted to point out there's an article in the newsletter about uh, Abiraterone, uh, Zytiga, in combination. And okay. they claim very good results. All right. Read your newsletter. Okay, may cause uh, breast tenderness, uh, bone thinning, I can testify to that, shrinkage of testicles and penis, that's the first time I've seen that uh, listed. Uh, I've, I had, I've had that shrinkage both places. Uh, loss of muscle mass, increased cholesterol levels. Now what is interesting, they didn't list some of the more common and devastating ones. Fatigue, memory loss, depression, erectile dysfunction, libido loss. I don't know why they don't mention it. It is uh, listed elsewhere, so, but this is the American Cancer Society, so I put that in there. Now, this is again, American Cancer Society, serious side effects. I put the serious in there, it's italics. Some research has suggested that the risk of high blood pressure, diabetes, strokes, heart attacks, and even death from heart diseases, this is on Lupron, is higher in men treated with hormone therapy, in other words, Lupron, although not all studies have found this. It's pretty serious stuff, but it's not listed as a side effect uh, in, uh, in the, on your website. I threw in, Permagon is 50% less of those side effects. Other side effects, now we got Castadex, have similar side effects to Lupron. Why? 
because it's only been tested when it's used with Lupron. Uh, the major difference, now here's something you don't hear about, the major difference from the LH or uh, RH agonist and anti-agonist is that antihydrogens may have fewer sexual side effects. When these drugs are used alone, which it hasn't been tested on, sexual desire and erections can often be maintained. Wow, do you know that? Okay, what's the cause of cancer? Is it uh, testosterone? Let's see what the, the, the literature says. Even though medical advancements are made every day, medical researchers still don't really know what causes prostate cancer. Fortunately, advances in diagnosis and treatment for prostate cancer look very hopeful. That's to raise your hope and get off the subject. Now, possible causes. Now, there's a lot going on in genetics and so forth. And then down here at the bottom, androgen, the male hormone that supports healthy growth of the prostate can also cause cancerous cell growth in the prostate. That's a little vague. Let's see what happens here. Some more possible causes. Most gene mutations related to prostate cancer seem to develop a man's life cycle in his life rather than being inherited. So all this genetic stuff is really generates a small percent of the cancer. Something's going on in your own body. Okay, in general, the more quickly prostate cells grow and divide, more chances there are for mutations. Therefore, anything that speeds up this process may make prostate cancer more likely. And now we come to the point. For example, androgens, male hormones such as testosterone, promote prostate cell growth. Having higher levels of androgens might contribute to prostate cancer risk in some men. Could you be a little more vague? It may, in some of you guys, maybe not in the rest of you, you don't know. Okay, that takes care of the cause of cancer. Now let's go on to who prescribes uh, ADT, your urologist. Now this is from the American Urological Association. Prostate cancer is less than 20% of the average urologist practice. Do you know that? 20% of their business is prostate cancer. It's in basically uh, the uh, urological arena, which is kidney stones and things like that. That's why you see a lot of women in the waiting rooms for a urologist. Uh, secondly, about 80% of the urologists in the U.S. perform less than 10 prostate surgeries a year. Ten a year, you hardly develop any degree of proficiency in surgery. Eighty percent of the urologists only do, actually the number is eight percent. So your average run-of-the-mill urologist, uh, it's not a big part of his business, and he doesn't do much in the way of surgery. So that's why it's important for you to go to a urologist that specializes in prostate cancer. And because uh, then they, they know what they're doing and so forth. Well, now let's, uh, let's go to biopsy. Most prostate biopsies are performed by urologists. When your general practitioner sees a rise PSA, where does he send you? He doesn't do the biopsy. He has to send you to a urologist. Okay, prostate cancer is the only cancer where the first referral by a GP is to a surgeon, not a surgeon being a urologist and not an uh, oncologist. Your GP thinks you have brain cancer, breast cancer, any other kind of cancer, he sends you to an oncologist. But if you have prostate cancer, well, you need a biopsy, you might as well go see this guy. So, most urologists prefer the, uh, the injections, because you gotta go to his office, and it's uh, generally, uh, he gets $1,000. And if you're taking Lupron every three, uh, three months, so that's four times a year times how many years? Uh, but if he gives you a pill like Casadex or Avidart, the money goes to CVS. And it's not thousands of dollars, it's hundreds of dollars. I'm not suggesting that urologists are greedy, but uh, this is a way of, of maintaining his business. Uh, that's uh, been my experience.
Okay, now intermittent uh, is another subject that's not very popular down in, in the San Diego area. Very few urologists suggest that. In fact, I was on it and they recommend I get off of it. They're not familiar with it. But here, American Cancer Society, is that most prostate cancer treated with hormone therapy become resistant to this treatment over a period of months or years. You rarely see that in writing. Uh, the theory is you can extend the life of it by shutting it off, not taking it for a while. And then, very important, down the second bullet, it, it gives them a break from side effects like decreased energy, sexual problems, and hot flashes. People who go on intermittent and stop taking it feel better. Now the question is, what happens to the PSA? This starts to rise. Uh, how high should it go? We have an example, and it was in uh, the newsletter. Did a great job of writing it. Uh, Bob isn't here today, so Bob Keck, who was our uh, librarian emeritus, uh, has 24 years experience on ADT. And this is what the article says. He had surgery in 92. After four years, his PSA started rising. His Gleason was six, and his PSA was 21. Ever since he has in intermittently used hormone therapy, first Lupron, then Cathodex, and Avidar, and more recently added Metformin. The Metformin really was significant on him. Now his PSA is cycling from 0 0.1, and he lets it go to six. And that takes about a year and a half. And then he goes back on the drugs. And that's a year and a half of good feeling and energy and less fatigue and so forth. That's the advantage of intermittent. Now, it works with some and not necessarily with everybody. Okay, let's talk about testosterone versus DHT. The main energy in the body are testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. That's from the previous uh, about 10 slides back. You don't hear much about dihydrotestosterone, except in this meeting, and from uh, our, our doctor friends up in the Marina del Rey. Dihydrotestosterone is five to 10% of the total testosterone, but has five to 10 times the stimulating impact on prostate cancer growth. It's the dihydro that stimulates cancer. It's not testosterone in general. Okay, here's my question. Why not focus treatment on dihydro? Is there an anti-dihydro pill? Yes, there is. It's a drug called 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. That was a nice complex name. Either finasteride or dutasteride, uh, Proscar or Avidart. I use Avidart. Uh, it's more effective. I'll show you that in a minute. Most Urologists in San Diego do not prescribe Avidart. How many are on Avidart right now? There's a prime example. And where did you learn about Avidart? Where did you learn about Avidart? Right here. And where did I learn about it? From him. <laughs> See? I'm not going to say you're ignorant, but you're not well informed. I have no financial interest in this subject, but I have experience on it. Okay. Why the doctors? Why the doctors don't? Well, typically not done in San Diego, but maybe done somewhere else. Okay. Here we go. Here, 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 here's the answer. Okay. FDA has approved it. It was done in an FDA test for enlarged prostate, BPH. They got approved, did wonders. They cut the study off early, it was so great. It also turned out to be effective for uh, prostate cancer, but because it's only approved for BPH, it's off-label for cancer. So we got a lot of guys down here not familiar with this thing, so they don't prescribe it. It also had a bad name back uh, 10 years ago because the editor of the New England Medical Journal wrote an editorial criticizing it, and that was in wrong, and he said it causes a higher grade cancer, which is wrong, and it creates PSA areas, which I don't agree with, and a number of strum and uh, 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 smoky don't agree with that. 
Uh, the doctors down here say, well, if you got to take an Avidart, you got to double the PSA number because it suppresses artificially your PSA. That's not true in my opinion. What they don't mention is it knocks the hell out of D DHT. Mine was 30, went on the pill. It went to 1.6. Mine is now less than one. Okay, combined therapy. Here we go. Combining uh, uh, the Lupron with Casadex. Some studies have suggested this may be more helpful, and others have not. Most doctors are not convinced. There's not enough evidence. Uh, they're trying to straddle the field, but to me, the sharp doctors think it's a great idea. Now, FDA approval of Casadex is as a supplement to Lupron only. It's not approved for monotherapy alone. Yes. You're, it's an injection. You got to go to the doctor. Only an injection. Uh, and there's. I don't, I don't want to use the word rebate, but uh, Lupron has, a company has a very effective uh, program of rewarding doctors who prescribe it. Okay, combined therapy. Some studies have suggested this may be more helpful, and others not. Most doctors are not convinced. Okay, hedging the bets. Okay, new study, February. Probably never heard it. Adding Casadex to radiation therapy can improve survival of some men with recurrent prostate cancer. If you have recurrent prostate cancer having radiation, look into Casadex because it cuts the, uh, the uh, it's got more than half uh, survival, better survival rate. 5.8% uh, of patients receiving uh, Casadex have died from prostate cancer versus 13.4 who didn't take it. Wow. Uh, same way in a, uh, the group, 14.5% developed distant metastases by 12 years versus 23 in the placebo group who didn't take Casadex. My gosh, this thing is effective on cancer. Why don't they prescribe it by itself, monotherapy? Because it's never been FDA tested. Now, here it again, it's being tested in a combination with radiation, and it is effective. Okay, then we have another thing called triple, and that what we're doing here is combining uh, Casadex with Avidart and Lupron. There is very little evidence to support the use of this triple blockage at this time. Well, I've talked to Dr. Strum, Stephen Strum, who's written the, the primer on cancer. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago. He's a strong advocate for Avidart uh, and combined. Okay, here are the ADT variations. There's, the first three are, are what Lamb has talked about uh, in meetings. There's the ultralight to start off with Avidart. Uh, and then you may want to go to uh, the ADT light, combine it with Casadex. And then there's a monotherapy. Maybe you just want to do Casadex alone. They don't like prescribing that because that's not FDA approved. That's offline, off-label. I, I did that. Okay, and then there's ADT, and in this group is primarily Lupron and a few Trellstar. And then there's combined CAB, which is Lupron plus Casadex, and then there's triple, which is Lupron, Casadex, and Avidar. Uh, then there's, uh, Dr. Strum talks about SAT, sequential androgen therapy, and he's into the details here. He's uh, super knowledgeable about ADT. Uh, he's doing a sequence here in a, in a structured program. And then, bingo, here it comes. Bipolar androgen, androgen therapy. You alternate testosterone supp suppression with testosterone Supplements. Wow, that's controversial. Okay, let me ask you ADT members. Before you went on ADT with your urologist, how many had your testosterone level tested? 
before you went on the ADT. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm impressed. I, I did a survey in '62, and it was much, much less. You know, if you if you're giving something to suppress your testosterone, how do you know what the level is before you do it? It's like going to uh, the gas station and the guy says you need oil and he didn't use the dipstick. He's selling oil. Uh, use the dipstick, find out what it is. Okay, how many of you who are on ADT have, are, are getting testosterone levels measured? You all should, if you're on ADT, get your testosterone level measured. Okay, how many have had, ever had your DHT level measured? One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's the primary cause of stimulating prostate cancer. Why don't they want to do a test on it? I have to ask for it. You got to ask for it. You got to ask for it. They're not going to do it. And they're only going to, my insurance only covers it every six months. Otherwise, they got to pay for it. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk about the levels, testosterone levels. Before ADT, the average, uh, depending upon age, is 200 to 500 is the measure. After ADT, it should go 50 or lower. Uh, Firmagon, boy, it went, my testosterone was 550. One shot and uh, two months, uh, my testo testosterone went to 30. From 550 to 30. Can you imagine the shock to the system? Okay, DHT. The average for a man is around 30, varies by age. After Avidar, it'll be five or lower. Mine's lower than one. Ask your doctor about getting a DHT test. See what he says. Okay, this is me. Here's, here's 18 years. Uh, I was on uh, EBRT, and as I mentioned, I uh, started the first year I had the report, my, uh, uh, and they thought, well, you have an infection, let's put the, let's give you a super duper uh, uh, a drug to, to kill the infection. And it didn't, my PSA went up in three months. Uh, then I had uh, EBRT, and you see what happened, went way down. And I, there's a break here in the chart be between one and the five, so it amplifies the differences at the lower level. And so it went down to below 0.5, which is good, and then started to rise slowly. I went to my GP. Uh, the thing about EBRT, well, after, after radiation, they, you never see that guy again. Uh, he sends you back to your urologist. Uh, kind of puzzling. You, you hear you, you've been in that damn thing for, what, two months every day, and then you don't see him ever again. Yes, uh, uh, okay. Uh, so what happened, my GP, I had to say, what because he was testing me, and so I, what about uh, a PSA? Oh, yeah, yeah, PSA. So... The, a few days later, I'd come back for the results, and he'd go down to all the standard stuff, and I'd say, what about the PSA? Oh, yeah, yeah, PSA is low. This doctor, who's a super doctor, didn't know that after treatment with EBRT, your benchmark for, for a PSA trigger on cancer is in the decimals. It's not the magic four. So he was waiting till I got to four. Well, when I got to point four, which is a significant increase. He thought it was low. He kept telling me it was low, so I took two years off. I'm cured. And then he did a PSA, and look, it went to 14. Wow. That was devastating to me. I thought I was cured. And I went to the urologist that he recommended, and he said, George, bend over, and I got a troll star. And you've heard this story before, and then I, I said, uh, Hey, should I join a support group? He said, no. No? Why not? There are a bunch of whiners. Is there a whiner here? Anybody a whiner? No. 
you're not whiners, you're enthusiasts. And I learned a lot particularly from this guy and Lyle. You don't want to take that stuff. You ought to take Avidot and Cassidex. That's what Dr. Lamb will tell you to do. Let's go up there. In fact, you don't have to go up there. Just take it. So I got my GP to prescribe Avidart and uh, Cassidex. Now, what happened on that chart over there uh, on ADT, uh, he, I, the Lupron or Trollstar had an immediate effect. They really, really plummeted down there. Right there. Boom. Uh, then we went on intermittent. I had a three-month shot. Okay, let me make a point here. Some of us, and maybe it's only a small percent, get a really intense side effect to Lupron. I had horrendous uh, hot flashes. The sweat just poured off me. The sweat would drip off my earlobe onto my collar. I was in misery. I had fatigue. I was, it was just terrible. What he should have done is give me a one-month shot because my response was within one month. Well, I got a bad reaction. Now I got to hang in there for another two months. Start off, if you're doing Lupron, my suggestion is you get a one-month shot and see what happens. And then, no effect, fine, go ahead. But in my case, and what happened was I got immediate got AFib, and then I got a stroke. And uh, so I came in here, and I, uh, these guys helped me tremendously. I went up to see Dr. Bond and so forth, and I went on Casadex and Lupron, and here's what happened. Boom. Because he put me on intermittent. Whoops. No, no. He, he, here's, here's the equivalent of Lupron. And then I went off of it for, for six months. I went off it for the three, and then I let it go for another two, and we, I asked to measure my uh, testosterone, and look what happened to it. So what did he say? Well, we've got to give you some more Lupron. I said, no, I want to go on Casadex and Avidar. And he wouldn't do that for me. I had my GP do it, and here's what happened. Boom, boom. Undetectable because of Avidar and Casadex. No Lupron, no Troll Star. I only had one Troll Star shot. So now what you see here is after that, these are the years. Uh, these are my in intermittent. If I, if I didn't go on an intermittent, this would be straight across here. But I went on intermittent to get rid of some of the side effects and, and, uh, that you do get, and I felt great. Question. To the Casadex and Avidart, that didn't lower your testosterone. It blocked the, 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 P, the receptor. Good question. But did it block, drop your pH? Good question. Your testosterone only blocks it versus Lupron. Here we go. I asked to get a testosterone. I didn't get it till after I had the shot. And there you see, after I was, after the three months wore off, my testosterone went up, and it went up. And then I went on, on Casadex and Avidart, and it went up, my testosterone went up to 700. From 30 to 700. I felt great. And then it kind of backed down to 550. And it's remained at 550 throughout this period of time. So here I got hugely high increase in testosterone, but no uh, significant increase in uh, PSA. Here's dihydro. Look what the dihydro did. Dihydro went down to one. That's the reason my PSA stayed down. It was the dehydro. Now, I want to comment. This is my personal experience. It may not be yours. Uh, I went to see a wonderful guy, Dr. Kipper, uh, a good friend of Gene's, to get an F-18 test, sodium fluoride test. And with their, there they inject uh, uh, radioactive material in your veins. You got an hour to wait. He decided to sit with me. And he looked at me and said, what are you doing? And I thought, what am I doing? Yeah, we're, we're kind of treatment right now. What are you doing? And I thought it was, he was critical. No, 
what are you doing, is what he should have said. Because I'm a contrast to his other patients. I was 83 then, that was a year and a half ago, 83, and I got a low PSA, and I'm feeling good and all that. And I've been doing that now for eight years. And what is it? It's the Casadextin Avidart that worked for me. Question. I read an article on uh, the study was done in September, was published in September in the European Oncology Journal, whatever, and they did a study of survival rate. And Avidart with Casadex and Casadex without Avidart. And the result of that study was that there was no effect of increased survival rate with the Avidar and Casadex, but the Casadex did have the increased survival rate. So they were saying that the addition of Avidar has no benefit. Uh, so, so you just highlight there's a controversy. There's no, uh, many of these studies are really not that very thorough, nor are they longitudinal and so forth. So you get confused results. You get the same thing where they're intermittent. It doesn't improve the mortality rate and so forth. Because they're really not doing a thorough enough study, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, let me move on here. Question? Yeah. Now, earlier you mentioned that Casadex lowers your testosterone, but you're taking Casadex and it doesn't seem to be affecting. No, it doesn't lower your testosterone. It does not. It puts a duct tape on your receptors. It doesn't do anything to your testosterone. In fact, it's, it's their theory, it stimulates it. It blocks receptors in your testosterone. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, some are upset because you're, you're increasing your testosterone. And increasing your testosterone is what? Good or bad? <laughs> Yes. I'd like to add to what he said about blocking receptors. When I took it, it blocks receptors all over your body. Like I didn't have to wear deodorant. I had no underarm deodorant whatsoever, no matter how much I sweat. So it blocks receptors over your entire body. At least it did for me. His dog doesn't recognize him anymore. <laughs> okay, Ron. Uh, when I was on Casadex, my testosterone rose to 1,200. And I was dating three women at the same time. And even three dates in one day. Beware. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we normally think side effects as being bad. These are good. All right. You don't need to order it, and you need a lot of women. Uh, okay. But I may be an odd one, but there are others like me that have a high testosterone and a low dihydro and feel good and doing good. And uh, so that's a, that's a little biased message from George, so recognize this. I'm not suggesting you do what I did, but ask your doctor about it. And I, if you do, I'd like to hear what he says when he comes back. Question. Where do you find a doctor that is knowledgeable about this? Is it Dr. Lamb's group or? The guys that really know, see they are, are prostate oncologists. They're not urologists. They're oncologists that specialize in prostate. And so they know this stuff in depth. So and, they'll prescribe uh, it? They will prescribe it? Right. Yes, yes. Your, your doctor can uh, here can do it too. If you have to maybe encourage them, say, well, why not? Why don't we try it? See, because uh, they're hesitant to do it because it's off-label. Or they, they don't know much about it. All right. Let's talk about results. Um, how many have heard of the Kaplan-Myers probability chart? All right, let me introduce it. Uh, there's a wonderful book. Uh, I get people who want to help me get me books about people dying of cancer. Uh, there was a wonderful book called When Breath Becomes Air. And it's about a wonderful neurosurgeon who, that's the peak of medicine, is, uh, is a neurosurgeon, who uh, spent years of crafting his skill and was about to 
uh, complete his residency in neuro uh, at I think it was Harvard. So excellent doctor, excellent writer, and then he discovers he has lung cancer at the age of 37. A very aggressive lung cancer. And being a doctor, and uh, he talks about doing brain surgery on, on people that have cancer of the brain, and how you have to, to weigh the difference between trying to cure the cancer without killing the person's mental life and uh, abilities. And you have to be very careful and balanced and all that. So he talks about that. It's a very, very uh, heart-rendering story. So when he finds he has lung cancer, he asks his lung cancer specialist, can I see the Kaplan-Meyers chart? No, you can't. Now, he doesn't show his patients the Kaplan-Meyers chart for brain cancer. You want to see a Kaplan-Meyers chart for, uh, for Lupron and Casadex? All right, down the bottom it says days to death. Does that get your attention? Over there on the other side, the y-axis is pro uh, proportion surviving. Now you see the 0 0.5, that's the median. Half of the men on bicalutamide plus Lupron, the other control agent is another equivalent of, uh, but not as effective, Casadex. Uh, and so here you see the, the five level, and you go across here, and you can see within those two, uh, the lifespan uh, for half of the men, the median, is uh, three years. Uh, now between the two, it is a half a year. So which one do you want to take? Take the Avidot, it costs a little bit more. Uh, now if you go down the chart a little further, whoops, and you see here we're, we're, we're plateauing out somewhat. Now the difference between the two is, is, is becomes maybe a couple of years as you go further out there. They look like they're close together, but when you look at it across like that, they're really farther apart than they appear. Now the real test is, uh, what does Lupron alone look like? Anybody seen that chart? Where's Lupron? Is it down here or is it up here? I can't get a chart. I'd like to, if you know where there one is, I'd like to see it. Uh, there is one. It's just that it's hard to find where it's published. Because that's the real measure about Casadex is how does it compare to Lupron alone? We don't have that. It's not readily available. Uh, now, I saw that chart, and guess what I started to think? George, you got, uh, you got three years. Well, for half, but the other half have well, how many years? Well, I've got eight years on this stuff, and I don't take Lupron. I'm starting to take Firmagon. So I'm doing really well. Uh, I don't mind looking at, the, at this chart. Okay, let's talk about results. Uh, we've got our group here, it's uh, heavy on Lupron, uh, a few on Trellstar and not on anything, and we got a, a, just a limited number on Firmagon. And uh, let me ask, how many are on Casadex alone? Good. How many are on Casadex and Lupron? All right, that's, that's, how's it working for you? No complaint? Uh -huh. You got a complaint, let's hear it. Well, just, you know, side effect complaints, but uh, I've been on for about three years, uh, the Lupron and the Casadex for about <coughs> two years, and it's just starting to not work anymore, my PSA is rising. And he's now looking at um, the Sandy. So, okay, do you qualify for a standing? Do you know? I think I will. We're going through that process okay. now. You know, where, where my PSA continues to rise as it has, and I'm going to have the test uh, scans done. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on their uh, Lupron and Casadex? Yes. Yeah, I uh, have had eye flashes and uh, fatigue 
fighting it with uh, doing the workouts that they suggest. To, uh, but uh, it's hard. Have you tried Casadex alone? No. Okay. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just curious. Uh, have you tried intermittent? Uh, I'm debating about that. Yeah. Uh, How many are on Avid Art here? Not very many. What What is your experience? You've been up to see Lamb lately? Hi. I had um, radiation five, six years ago, and my PSA was... Uh, PSA? Oh, can you hear me? Okay. My PSA uh, was gradually crept up to one and leveled off there for a year, and then it started to bounce to 1.3 and 1.9 in six months. So Dr. Lamb um, had a Aximan scan. They put fluorine, radioactive fluorine 18, and they found one hot spot. And he talked to Dr. Munt at UCSD Radiation, and they figured they could, they could get it with a stereotactic radiation. And uh, Dr. Lamb put me on, um, instead of one uh, Casadex a day, he put me on three. The, 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 everything in the literature says one capsule, 50 milligrams a day is it. He put me on, thir on three. And uh, I get a, a small tablet of um, um, Proscar every day and medication for breast enlargement, which, well, you know, you're going to have radiation or you're going to have these pills. But I haven't had any ser serious side effects from the whole thing. And the, the plan is now I'll be on Casatex probably for two years. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, I'll be on um, Casatex for a couple of months, and then they'll do radiation, five treatments, to get rid of the one hot spot. It's am amazing when they do it, when you do the scan, they, they start at the top of your body and go to your ankles, and there was only one hot spot in my body, which I'm very fortunate. Uh, the, the prostate bed itself, there was no sign of anything at all. Lymph, lymph it was one lymph node, right, I'm sorry, one lymph node that was, um, it was in, in a position where they could not uh, do a um, biopsy. So anyway, I'm, that's what I'm looking forward to. I have no ill effects. And uh, Doc, you know, Lamb said, hey, you're, we can take care of this. Casadex is not a bad actor. You're triple the dosage. And I have no ill effects, touch wood. Dr. Lamb is, uh, Dr. Lamb, Dr. Scholes, Dr. Turner, and Marina Del Rey are prostate cancer oncologists. He doesn't do surgery. He doesn't do radiation. He tells you what you should do. Yeah. Radiation. Uh, eight, uh, 81 grays, uh, 45 treatments. And uh, that, six years. Well, the good news is, the as soon as my PSA started to go up, uh, Richard Lamb uh, said, uh, do the Ax Aximan scan, uh, and that's painless. But, they, you know, they found the one hot spot, which I'm lucky. And uh, uh, it's amazing how much Dr. Lamb and Dr. Munch just talk to each other. So what, what should we do with this guy? Okay, radiation. Boom, we'll, we'll, we'll zap that. One of the doctors said, you know what, you don't really have to do anything. You could kind of let it go for a couple of years. I said no, you have a you have, you have a clean shot at the radiation at the node. Zap it. Okay. Anything else? Questions? Can I ask you a question. Yes. Um, at what point um, when you the PSA starts rising again, um, did you find it necessary or believe it was necessary to do intervention? My PSA. I had surgery and then I had radiation. And it's been rising uh, about 
0.1 a month uh, to the point where it's now 1.7. And the decision that's coming up is when to start something. Well, my, my PSA gradually went up to one and leveled off there for a year and a half, and then it bounced. And that's when it, it went from 0 0.06 for the first year uh, to 1.0, and it leveled off there for a year or two, and then it jumped. And uh, Dr. Lamb didn't mess around. He just said, okay, we have to find out what that is. We're going to do a scan. 1.9 in a matter of six months. So that's a, that's a big jump. If I had radiation, which is different than, than surgery. By the way, George, this is one of the best presentations I've ever seen here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're, we're not over yet. I want some more participation here. Let's go down here to the, the current situation because uh, we have a large number on ADT, and uh, as we've mentioned, a large number are on Lupron. Uh, what's your degree of satisfaction in general? Uh, do you have a high degree of satisfaction? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, let's jump down to low degree of satisfaction. It's not what you thought it was, and you're having kind of dragging side effects, and you're not happy. How many have with that? Well, that's good news. That's good news. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to see that. I, I, because of me, I, I'm the extreme case, which is good. Uh, it's not shared by others. Uh, anybody have second thoughts about doing what they did? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, it's, how long have you been on it? No, I, that's not necessarily what I have second thoughts about. I've had surgery, I've had radiation, and I've had ADT. Yeah. So I'm not sure that it was the best choice to have the surgery to begin with. Mm -hmm. Then the radiation left me with radiation scars where I bled for quite a while. It was two years after my radiation that I bled. So did that do me any good? You know, those are ways I yeah, the, the thing about ADT, it has, uh, for each individual it varies, but it has a, a, a definite lifespan for uh, its effectiveness. And uh, I'm nearing the end of that. Uh, my Gleason is nine, if not higher. Uh, my tissue in that region is what they call undifferentiated cells. Uh, my s tissue down there is like asphalt. Uh, you don't see cells. Uh, as a result, what happens is it's not generating the true PSA, the antigen, like the other cells would. So the PSA is not indicative of the growth of the cancer. I've had two TERPs, and uh, the, this last one has been uh, very painful for me. And so uh, I don't qualify because I have not metastasized. I was going to get an actumin in the test to see if I had metastasized, metastasized because my PSA went down because of the surgery of removing the tissue. Uh, they can't run the actumin test. So I can't find if I metastasized because, uh, with the, that test because I don't qualify. So uh, I just got to wait for things to develop. To, uh, and as my doctor says, uh, all right, uh, Lamb said, George, you got bad luck, and I don't have a prescription for that. Uh, so I just got to wait and see. So I get in the niche or wherever on the FDA qualifications for all these things, so insurance covers it. Uh, but let's, uh, let's move on here. How many have done intermittent? Anybody? Okay, well, we got more than I thought. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Seven, eight. Uh, did it work for you? Didn't work for you, no. Three months. It worked for me. I felt better. And then it, 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 the, the, the ratcheting was rising, and I decided, well, I'll just not stop anymore. It worked for you, Chuck? Yep. Sure. So my first... 
um, androgen deprivation was was a year during which I had w was post surgery I had radiation and chemotherapy and after the year on ADT um, I was off for two years I went back on when the PSA started rising and did it for nine months off and I was free for a year. Then I went back on ADT and in each time it was Lupron, Casadex, and the Avidart. And at the end of the nine month period I started failing the thing. But hey, it had been five years. The average time uh, for ADT to work is three years. So I did well. The other thing I want to say is the combination of those Lupron, Avidart, and Casadex does reduce cancer. When the first time my PSA started rising after ADT, I went to Dr. Almeida in Arizona and got a scan that showed five lymph nodes involved. And then after the next time when my PSA started rising, after nine months of ADT, I went back to Dr. Almeida, the five lymph nodes that had been involved, three of them showed no cancer at all, two of them showed some cancer, but a new one showed up. So it did kill cancer in, in some of those lymph nodes. And, uh, you know, and, and the only way to do that is to, to find out what it's doing is get a good scan. Okay, thank you, Chuck. I want to add to that. I was on uh, triple androgen blockage for uh, six months from June last year to January, and then shortly afterwards I got another bone scan. In, in uh, June a year ago, uh, I had over 100 metastases in my bones. And uh, last March, when we did another bone scan after that, I had maybe 10% of what I had earlier. Good. Good to hear that. Okay, let's talk about side effects. Uh, maybe we don't have much to talk about here that... Uh, your experience has been, but down the bottom, you saw that chart earlier on, the fatigue, memory loss, depression, uh, those were very se severe for me. Because of my age, I don't know if directly related to the ED and libido, but uh, here are some, some solutions to the side effects. Uh, hot flashes can now often be helped by treatment. Ask your doctor about it. Uh, brief radiation treatment to the breasts. Uh, if you're fearful of getting breast enlargement, you can get radiation therapy. Uh, it works for some, didn't work for me. Uh, it's, again, it varies with the individual. It worked for Gene, and so he suggested I do it, and it doesn't. In fact, what happened, it created shingles on my breast. If you want to see something funny, is uh, that. And uh, of course, the doctor denied anything about that, but if you saw me, you'd laugh. But it brings tears to my eyes. Okay. Uh, several drugs can be uh, help prevent uh, your bone uh, loss. Depression can be treated with antidepressants and counseling. Uh, I find that I have to crank myself up in the morning, which works for me. We have a question here. Can you distinguish between the slow-growing uh, prostate cancer and the aggressive Good question. Is there a distinction between the two? Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Lotz uh, up in Canada is the leading one that says 
a Gleason 4 cell structure, uh, the, that cell structure is entirely different than a Gleason 3. He views Gleason 3 as really not being cancerous. At best, it's precancerous. A Gleason 4 has an entirely different DNA structure and degree of aggressiveness. It used to be the theory that a 3 went into a 4. No. The 4 is the really potent one. And I have slides showing a very different cell structure. And that's when if you have a, a, a 3 plus 4, a low 7, or a 4 plus 3, uh, you really need to track that. But a six is two threes, okay, you're, you're very fortunate. And that's the ma vast majority uh, of uh, prostate cancer patients have a Gleason six, which means they got a long life and they continue to come to our meetings. But uh, if you got a four in there or a five, I got a five plus four, that's serious stuff. And uh, that's the aggressive stuff. That's why my doubling rate is, uh, is uh, three months. Okay, question. Um, yeah, the uh, radiation treatment to prevent the uh, gynecomastica, um, they recommend that you get that before you start the, any of these treatments. And I wondered if you'd come across anything in your reading that would explain why they say that and why it doesn't work sometimes, most of the time, after you've already started on these drugs. You're talking about the breast star? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they want to make sure, you, once it starts, you can't do anything about it. You have to have surgery if you want to have it reduced. Uh, and, uh, once it starts, you, it's, you can take care of it. But it doesn't normally reduce. But you if can you cannot reduce it, it stops it. Right. right way okay, right. You can't reduce it. And so whatever you got is going to stay there unless you do liposuction thing to do is to go ahead and do it before you start the cast. Well, no. That's what they recommend, right. and, I, and because I've heard that it doesn't work if you're already into the drugs, but his experience seems to contradict No, I know that. several so people, I don't know. <clears throat> it stopped it for sure. Okay. Uh, it varies. <laughs> <laughs> it varies. <laughs> There's also a drug that stops um, the no. breast growth, Favara. Okay. <coughs> oh yeah. It, it stops what? Breast growth. What is it? The Favara. It doesn't stop the growth. It stops the pain. No. Okay. It varies. It didn't stop the growth. It stopped the pain. It varies. And, yeah, okay. Let me let me just comment. When I talk to my doctors, and I got a range of them too. Uh, when I ask them about these things, yeah, we could do that. Like, I got to bring it up. You, do, you have to bring it up. They're not going to gun down the list with you. So I had to bring it up and remind them because they don't want to do it on Avidart and Casadex. And I say, it works. Well, oh, yeah, okay. And they'll do it. So you got to be a little pushy if you want it. Uh, others will say, yes, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Yes. Um. I just had a biopsy a couple of weeks ago that turned out positive, and I was curious. I know you can't recommend anything, but if I could see a show of hands of how many people have got a second opinion. On, on your biopsy? Do it. Do it, particularly if you got a seven. Or even if you got a six, a, 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 you've got to go to an independent pathologist, not one in your HMO. With HMO, he looks at what the other doctor pathologist said. He says, oh, he's my golfing buddy. I'll, I'll, I'll agree. My neighbor has John Hopkins. John Hopkins. Right. You're right on. That's the one to go to. And, and uh, it will be covered by your insurance. All right. Uh, depression. Here's some more. Okay. Now, here's a guy that is on these uh, uh, fatigue, uh, slow down sort of thing, and he is a prime example of what exercise does for him, and that's my buddy Gene. It works. Uh, that, that's the first thing that uh, uh, Dr. Lamb recommended for me. I didn't want to. I hate gyms. I hate the atmosphere. And uh, at the time, I probably weighed about 230, and he says, get to the gym. It will help you. 
and I'm now addicted to the gym, and everybody makes fun of me. I go uh, an hour a day, six days a week. But the positive side of that is I don't have significant fatigue. I'm now 15, 15 pounds lighter. Uh, probably they've lost some muscle. I don't know whether that's because I'm older or what. And certainly I've lost muscle mass. But the whole point is, uh, of all the different drugs that I've done, and there have been many, uh, the, the exercise has helped uh, overcome all of those side effects to the major degree. Uh, and the side effect was I used to be on uh, blood pressure medication for like 25 years, and I threw those pills away. The first two times I was on ADT, I didn't exercise, and I had a lot of side effects. The third time I started going to the gym and in a, I've been going for a year and a half and I'm quite a bit stronger than I was when I started. So I assume my bones are stronger too. Okay, again, here's this from the American Cancer Society, the next two uh, paragraphs. There is growing concern that hormone therapy for prostate cancer may lead to problems, thinking, concentrating, and so forth. Still, hormone therapy does not, does seem to lead to memory problems. Uh, more studies are needed, more studies are needed. So there's a, a basis for concern. Let me comment about testosterone, because I had very high levels of it, and when that goes down, it not only affects your sex, it affects your personality, your emotions. Uh, I use the analogy coming from the aerospace industry. Testosterone is like uh, hydraulic fluid. It's not only used to raise and lower the landing gear, but also for rudder control, yaw, pitch, and all that. So it affects across the board. And that's why if you focus on the DHT, then you don't have all these other things. You're not shutting down total testosterone. So men live on testosterone. That's what makes you guys uh, good looking and feeling good and aggressive and all that. Question. Well, I was just gonna say uh, on the uh, exercise, I go to the gym too, uh, five days a week. And I find that it's important to focus your workout in several different areas. You gotta do cardio, uh, which, in, which is treadmill and, uh, and swimming. And you gotta do uh, weight bearing activities like uh, I use the stack weight machines because you're, you're, you gotta worry about your bones that might be fragile. So you wanna make sure you don't use free weights or any of that stuff. And, so that you, and you can adjust the levels to just what you can achieve. But resistance. Yeah, yeah, resistance weight. Yeah. Uh, would you guys be interested in hearing from a, uh, an exercise person for dealing with exercise related to prostate cancer uh, for older guys like us? Would you be interested in attending something like that? Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Anybody got a suggestion of a speaker? Let's do that. Hey, George. Could I mention one thing about exercise? The YMCA has a program called Live Strong where you get a free membership and they meet uh, three days a week and they teach you all the machines and go through the whole thing just for prostate, uh, for cancer patients in general. They started, I picked up your, the brochure out here for Peninsula Y. Yeah, okay, okay, good. But now they have it, they just started at Rancho Penasquitos where I'm going and I think they started it in La Jolla. Okay, okay. Great. well, where, what YMCA's are you familiar with? I go to the one in, in PQ, but the, the first one was in Peninsula, in uh, Point Loma and the next one is, was in La Jolla. Okay. Good, thank you. Okay, controversy, you want a controversy? Uh, particularly related to testosterone. Okay, there's a headline here, destroying the myth about testosterone replacement in prostate cancer by Abraham Morgenthaler. Uh, this is a doctor who, who uh, in treating patients with prostate cancer, found that uh, those with low testosterone had a higher uh, tendency for prostate cancer low testosterone, and he published it, and everybody got to boo him about that because Dr. Hubble, how many have heard of Dr. Hubble? 
the founder, if you will, of prostate cancer uh, medicine. Uh, he won the, the uh, Nobel uh, Prize for his work in 1940. Okay, and now this is the story here of uh, Dr. Morgenthaler. I found the original article by Huggins from 1941 at the Harvard Medical School Library, and I, it was published in a volume where is now a highly respected journal called Cancer Research. I read how Dr. Huggins used a new blood test to show that lowering testosterone by castration or estrogen treatment caused prostate cancer to regress, and how t testosterone injection had caused enhanced growth of prostate cancer in these men. And that's the root of the uh, anxiety about testosterone. And then I noticed something that made my heart race. Dr. Huggins had based his enhanced growth conclusion on a single patient using a test that has since been abandoned because it prov provides such erratic results. I sat there in the basement of the library reading the same lines over and over to make sure I hadn't misread it. Later, I asked several colleagues to read it as well. Dr. Huggins' assertion that higher testosterone caused greater growth of prostate cancer repeated for so long and accepted as gospel was based on almost nothing at all. This whole article is in uh, on our website in case you want to read it. Wow. Let's jump now to testosterone therapy. Getting injections or supplements, patches or whatever. Ooh. Anybody have any experience on that? Yes, sir. Well, I had low testosterone and they put me on supplemental testosterone gel for four years. Um, then my PSA jumped. Your PSA what? My PSA jumped um, at the end of, towards the end of that fourth year from just normal to 20 in six months. And they took me off the testosterone for a All right. It varies, doesn't it? Uh, we have Jim. Who, who was on Lupron for years and, and stopped taking it, but his testosterone stayed down. And he was dragging, he was fatigued, and so forth. So then he took the patch, and he feels great. It varies. Uh, if Lyle were here, he'd give a strong pitch for taking testosterone. Uh, the uh, PCRI conference had a speaker, I think it was two years ago, uh, on how testosterone can help men greatly who have prostate cancer. He does not, not prescribe it if you have metastasized cancer. But after taking uh, the treatments, uh, your ADT and so forth, he, he has, this is down in, uh, in uh, uh, Baylor, the lead doctor down there, gave a fascinating talk about how testosterone supplementation is very effective. It varies. Uh, it's controversial. That's why it's blank. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> yes? Is testosterone administration sometimes combined with Av Avidar to block the conversion to dihydrotestosterone? No. <coughs> no. No, no. 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 Defeat the whole well, no, I mean, if, if DHT is the greatest stimulator of, oh, of yeah. cancer, yeah. I mean, that because you could get the restoration of strength and stamina from testosterone alone, am I understanding it correctly? But block the production of the more potent, dangerous DHT. I'm just wondering if... Well, we have an example here. This is why doctors don't recommend it. All you need is one case that... Yeah. And so, forth. so they're very uncertain. There's not been a lot of good testing <coughs> Okay. Okay. Question, question. Is, is there going to be any discussion? Are there real downsides to going from continuous ADT to intermittent ADT? I mean, I'm considering it now. And are there downsides to yeah. intermittent? Yeah. Is there some doctor find there is. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, a good point is, is to you're try. Allowing, you're allowing yeah. the cells, to, cancer cells to grow, yeah, and, and, and it may not be able to knock it down the next time you take yeah. the drug. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the studies that have done have been rather flawed in structure and so forth. So anybody can pick those apart. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I've been on Blue Brown for about a year, and I, I don't I get very short uh, uh, comments on Dr. Nguyen, and he says, I had, when I first was diagnosed, I had 1,800 PSA. And so they, they got uh, Lupron and Aquarion and radiation, and I've been on it for about a year. And every three, mo every three months, I go, and now it's down to 1.2, okay? And he's saying the reason why, because I don't know, I don't ask questions, but he says that the reason why they're giving Lupron is to, to reduce the testosterone, okay? And this is why the thing has come down. But now you're saying that, that home, home, uh, testosterone therapy might be good because I, I feel like I feel lousy at you know I, at depression I have uh, you know anxiety attacks and uh, flash I've been through this for a whole year and I, my quality of life is just sucks yes. and so I'm thinking the next time I go in I say, yeah, I'm thinking I don't want any more this is either you have to die or something I just can't handle this anymore and now by myself out here because I moved down here by myself so it, I had no you know, support so therefore, I'm just thinking, uh, should I ask for, a, for a, a testosterone therapy or should I ask for admittance or, admittance or something? My, my suggestion is you sit down with your doctor and express just exactly what you said in the emotional power that you just said to him. Have you done that? Get another doctor then. I mean, See, the, the point is that there's some of us that have a severe reaction, and if they don't care, find someone that cares, that has options for you. Yeah. Uh, do yoga uh, uh, or, 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 you know, do, do, some, yeah. do some exercise or something, but, you know, I tell them what, what I really have, all that stuff. I said, I just can't, you know, it's, it's, so, it's unbearable. You know, yeah. so. Every day I get flashes and I get depression. Well, I, I'd go up to Marina Del Rey myself. But uh, let, let me just comment. Uh, when you get a certain age, doctors don't want to see you. Uh, I've, read, I've been reading a book, and, and if you t look at it from a doctor's standpoint, this old guy comes in, and he doesn't have one thing wrong. He has a whole bunch of things wrong, and some of them he's had for years. He's got arthritis, back pain, and so forth and so on. Uh, there's no quick thing he can solve, so he has to listen. And you older guys, you have faulty memory, and you can't answer the questions. You're hard of hearing, and it's a drag to deal with old people. I went to see, when I was in doubt, I went to my, to the oncologist at Scripp. I walked in there, and he said, how old are, oh, how old are you? And I said, I'm 83. That was a year ago. <clears throat> he said, why are you here? <laughs> I said, well, you know, I got this. I got a Gleason here. It's in my seminal vesicle. I want to know what you're going to do. Well, what do you want done? And I go, I don't know. And he said, well, uh, you know, no surgeon would touch you. And I said, why not? Well, you're old and you're hard. So, you, so it's this kind of attitude that you get. You, want, you need a doctor that cares. Okay? Uh, let, me, uh, let me close here. Here are some questions you might want to ask your doctor. You might want to ask him uh, when he talks about ADT. Ask about your testosterone level. What is it now? Should we, could we test it? That's, then you've got a benchmark. It's working or it's not working. These, these tests are good for benchmark. What's my dihydro? See if he scrunches up his face or not. Uh, would Avidart be good to start. And as I said, well, we could do that. You might say that. I ask about Casadex. What are the side effects of Lupron? And uh, what are the remedies to those? And how long will I take Lupron? How long do you recommend it? And what are the options? These are the kinds of questions you should ask your doctor if you're thinking about going on ADT. Any more questions? Or can we uh, wrap it up? Okay, we got a question. One paragraph from Dr. Strom's. This is uh, from Dr. Strom's new book, or 2013 is when this book came out, Prostate Cancer, Essential Concepts for Survival. This is about side effects from androgen deprivation therapy. 
He says, androgen receptors are also present in many tissues of the body besides the prostate, and these include the skin, male genitalia, muscles, heart, bones, and brain. Specific cells in various tissues and organs are particularly sensitive to their needs for androgen. These include the neurons involved in memory, erythroid cells in the bone marrow responsible for pr pr production of red blood cells, muscle cells, and osteoblasts involved in bone formation. In the early years of using ADT, I noted the common occurrence of anemia and reported this in the peer-reviewed literature as the anemia of androgen deprivation. So. <laughs> I talked to Dr. Strom. He's a great guy. He's uh, limited his practice. He's up in Oregon. He got out of the LA area. He is a co-founder of the Prostate Cancer Research Institute. They're coming up for early registration, half the cost, coming up in September. Highly recommend it. His attendance about five, 700 uh, patients listening to the top doctors in the nation. Recommended highly, and uh, 60 bucks. Uh, it's a good thing. Anyway, in talking to him, uh, he says they talk about recurrence. It's not really recurrence. It's just you didn't get it all. It didn't come back. It was there. And uh, do you know how many cancer cells are on the head of a pin? A million. Cancer cells are very tiny. The doctors can't see them. So when they say, I got it all, he got all that he could see. But there's very tiny things, and they're very persistent. And they may go away for a while and then rejuvenate and so forth. So that's why you want to keep getting PSA tests and keep coming to this meeting. Thank you for your attention. I enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. Yeah.